Welcome to day 98 of our scripture reading and daily encouragement. Today we're going to cover 2 Samuel 6, 7, and 8. Then we're going to cover Luke chapter 19, verses 11 through 27. We begin by David's bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. And it says there's a great celebration. They have musical instruments. They're singing songs. They're blowing the horns. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And I just want you to picture that. Here's a servant of the Lord. He's been crowned king. And he danced before the Lord with all his might. We should celebrate. Guys, we should celebrate when we are worshiping God. David didn't care if he looked like a fool. We even see that his wife, one of his wives, she got on to him for how he was dancing and celebrating and how he was looking like a fool. And David responds and he says, I'm celebrating before the Lord. And yes, I'm willing to look foolish, even humiliated. That's how much David loved God. So we see God reward David. Not only is he king, but he's been given a promise that his kingdom will last forever. And we know what that means is because Jesus, our King Jesus, comes out of that lineage of David, the Messiah. He comes out of the lineage of the kingdom of David. And this is God is giving this promise here in the scripture. Not only have you persevered, you've waited on my timing. I'm going to give you the kingdom but your kingdom's going to last forever. And we see David become very thankful when he writes this thankful letter to God. He's endured, and now he's celebrating and thankful. And I think there's a message there for us because sometimes we just get stoic. I don't know what other word to use when we're thinking about God or when we're at church or when we're worshiping. We're scared about what others around us are going to think. And guys, we should get fired up. Through Jesus and his blood, we are allowed into the kingdom. God makes promises for us, and when he fulfills those, and when we have victories, we should be celebrating. We should be thankful, and we should be celebrating just like David did. Then that tells us here in Scripture, the Lord made David victorious wherever he went. So, guys, I want you to be encouraged to celebrate your love for God. Tell others about it. Be enthusiastic about it. No one wants to hear about some dull belief system. They want to they want to see you fired up. If you're fired up, that's contagious and people are going to want that. And this is an example where I mean, it it talks about in the New Testament in Acts where it said they were so fired up and excited, people thought they were drunk. That insinuates they were acting foolish like David. So guys, I just want to encourage you. It is safe to celebrate your love for God. It is safe to act foolish and celebrate. And sometimes unbelievers need to see that to have hope. So I just want to encourage you with that today. As we go over into... Luke chapter 19, it starts out in verse 11. It says, the crowd was listening to everything Jesus said. That may be just a simple verse, but I want to stop right there because that's a good starting point. Do we, as believers and followers of Christ, do we listen to everything Jesus says? Obviously, this is a scenario where Jesus is talking to them in person and teaching them, but we have his words in Scripture Do we listen to everything he says? Or do we just listen to the parts we want to hear? Do we listen to everything Jesus says by reading scripture? Or do we just listen to what some man tells us Jesus says, writes in a book what Jesus says? So guys, this crowd was listening to everything Jesus said, and we need to do that as well. We have to listen to what Jesus says. But then Jesus takes it a little bit farther than just listening. He starts to tell them what they got to do. So he's trying to explain to them that his kingdom is not immediate. They're Remember, they're expecting a king to come and reign like David did and start having these military victories. And he's trying to explain to them, my kingdom is not immediate. And he gives them a parable and he's basically saying, I've got to go away. I've got to go away to be crowned king. 
and I'll be coming back. But while I'm away, I'm entrusting you. I'm entrusting you with some things. And he gives a story about a man who entrusts the servants with his riches. We've heard a similar story in a different gospel about the talents. But in this one, he says, he gave them, um, he divided among them 10 pounds of silver. And he told them to invest it while he was gone. So here's something I'm leaving with you. I'm giving you something. Now you need to do something while I'm gone. You need to invest this silver. The, he comes back. The first servant says, Master, I took your money. I invested it. And I made 10 times the original amount. The king exclaims, exclaims, well done. You're a good servant. You've been faithful with the little I entrusted you. So you'll be governor of 10 cities as your reward. So that first servant took what he was given. He invested it. He did something with it. And he brought a profit, so to speak, to the master. And the master rewarded him. The next servant said, I also invested your money, but I made five times the amount. Well done. See, one of them made 10 times the amount. One of them made five times the amount, but they both got the same answer from the king. Well done. You will be a governor over five cities. In other words, you took what I gave you. You did something with it, and I'm going to give you more when the kingdom comes. But the third servant brought back the original amount of money and said, Master, I hid your money and kept it safe. I knew, or he says, I was afraid because I know you're a hard man to deal with. You take what isn't yours and harvest crops you didn't plant. Now, the king's response to this servant is much different. So the two that had done something with what they were given, well done. But for this servant who did nothing with what he was given, you wicked servant. He says, your own words condemn you. At least you could have put it in the bank and gotten me some interest. And then he took the one from that servant and he gave it to the one who had come back with 10 times. And they said, but wait, he already has. He already has 10. Yes, the king replied. This is verse 26. Yes, the king replied. And to those who use well what they are given, even more will be given. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Guys, we need to listen to this and we need to take this to heart because this is very similar to, this, to the parable of the talents that we've already read. And Jesus is telling them, I'm going to go away, which he did. I'm going to come back, which he has not yet. While I'm gone, I'm going to trust you with my riches and you're supposed to invest them. See, each of us is a believer each of us, Paul tells us we each have gifts. We each are a part of the body. Not everybody's the same part. We all have different skills, talents, gifts that we're supposed to use to further the kingdom. And what Jesus is saying is to some, I will give much. To some, I will give little. Whatever the point, it doesn't matter how much you're given. It matters what, you're do, what you do with it is what I'm trying to say. And that's what Jesus is telling them. I got to go away. I'm going to come back. But while I'm away, I'm entrusting you with my riches. And I expect you to do something. Jesus has given us gifts. He's given us all a purpose and he expects us to do something. This scripture started out in verse 11 with the crowd was listening. Yes, we need to listen. But Jesus is telling us we also need to do. My concern is that too many Christians have become comfortable and do nothing. And we especially see that in today's time when it's become so easy to just sit at home and watch church on television, live stream. And that's never what the body of Christ was designed to be. We were designed to be together for the community. We were designed to be together for the relationships, for the hope. We were designed to serve together. That's what we've been told over and over. But our society has made a lot of Christians comfortable with doing nothing. And Jesus is warning us, if you do nothing, you're going to be called a wicked servant. When you're called to give an account of what you've done with what Jesus has entrusted you. So today, as I encourage you to do something, listen to the words of God. But do something with what Jesus is giving you. 
I'm giving you that as an encouragement because the day you stand before Jesus in judgment, I want him to say, well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Not get away from me, you're wicked. So guys, let's learn from King David. Let's celebrate and be thankful for what God has done for us. But let's take what he's given us and let's invest it. If you're a servant, be a servant. If you're a giver, be a giver. If you pray for people, go pray for people. Whatever your gift or talent is, do it. And do it with everything you have. And you will be rewarded in the kingdom when Jesus comes back. Hope you're encouraged today. And I hope you have a great day.